All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Vostok Continued mod, the parts of which were originally made by form user Beal for the Greater Tantares mod. Now, sadly, when that was revamped, these particular Vostok parts were unfortunately abandoned, but thankfully were subsequently picked up by form user Iron Cretin to bring us the mod pack we have today. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to create the historic Vostok spacecraft as well as its upper stage. And this is pretty awesome. As for any of you who even vaguely know your space history, the Vostok is, of course, the spacecraft which took the very first human into space. And that is pretty freaking sweet. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all is added in by this mod. And we'll start by grabbing a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison as it's pretty comparable to these capsules here. And then of course turn on our beautiful mod filters. And we'll start with the first of the two capsules, the VT2K Zenith Ballistic Capsule. Now this is actually quite nice because it is an unmanned command pod so you can start your Soviet Russian career without killing any Kerbals. And uh, again, as for the historic part of it, this was how they started the Vostok program, though um, technically it was less for science and more for being a sp by satellite? I mean, it was the Cold War after all. And well, as for our game, it is a lovely little capsule, does have its own built-in ablator. It is, of course, as mentioned, an unmanned command pod, has built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, has an observe material bay, since of course there's no crew inside to do a crew report. We instead have the material bay experiment, which is quite cool. And then, of course, does also have a 200 electric charge and 30 monopropellant and overall is just a very cool little capsule and yeah the beginning of the Soviet space program. Well, not there were other things before it, but yeah, you know what I mean. Now the next capsule we have is the VT-3KA ballistic capsule and this holds a single crew member and of course requires a minimum of one crew to operate or else it's gonna be in trouble. Now it's pretty much the same design as the 2K here except for one key difference. Well actually two key differences. Well on the 2K we have a lovely little camera hole here. The 3K it, it's actually more like a proper window. And of course on the other side here we have really no window. It kind of looks like there should be one there, but it's grayed out because, well, yeah, a camera doesn't need to see the other side, whereas we actually do have a proper window right there on the 3K. And yeah, overall, quite nice. Very cool designs to them. Now, as for the stats on the 3K here, of course, built-in ablator does have data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, this one, of course, having the crew report, 125 electric charge, so a little bit less because of of course, you got to fit a Kerbal in there rather than a much smaller camera. And finally, 30 mono propellant. And that are our two capsules. Now, sadly for the manned one up here, it actually doesn't have an internal view. Hopefully one does come in time. I mean, Iron Cretin only did just take over these parts a few days ago, so hopefully we'll get it down the road. Now, one thing though I do want to point out before we continue moving on, and something that I really love about this pack, they're stock alike. You know me, I'm a sucker for anything stock alike, cause it just, makes me feel like it fits a bit better with the rest of the game's parts. And so yes, all these Vostok parts have been designed to look like other parts of the game, which is always good. Now let's continue on downward to our next uh, category here with fuel tanks, and we have two to show off. Uh, the first being the BKE 180 liquid fuel tank, which holds 81 liquid fuel and 99 oxidizer, and just fits perfectly right there so as you can see it fits the 1.25 size variety it's a very cool tank I actually quite like it I always like when the fuel tanks have that uh, extra little bit of modeling to them and they're not just a solid cylinder so we actually have like the uh, I guess 
what would be more spherical tank inside being protected by the outer shell. And I do also like that it has these little bits on the side here that protrude out ever so slightly. It just, you know, adds a little bit more character to it, which is always nice. Now the next thing we have is the VTE-M6 propellant tank, and this will hold a mere six mono propellant in each, but of course, well, they are quite tiny, so you could put a lot of them onto a single spacecraft, and they still really wouldn't take up much room. And these are radially attached, of course, so, you know, you can do all sorts of fun things with them and pop them on like that. Always good. Now, into the engine category, we have three in here. The first is the RK-109, a serious liquid fuel engine, which, if we pop right there, is quite cool. I do enjoy Enjoy it, and it has a maximum thrust of 30 kilonewtons in vacuum and will really sip fuel at 0.8 liquid fuel per second and roughly one oxidizer. And actually, does have its own built in liquid fuel and oxidizer, with the liquid fuel being 27 and oxidizer at 33. One would assume that's what this uh, sort of donut y bit is around the outside. Very, very fun. Now we then have the bezel vernier engine, which is a radially attached engine right there. Beautiful. And it has a maximum thrust of 5 kilonewtons in vacuum, uses a mere 0.153 liquid fuel per second and 0.187 oxidizer, and has a nice gimbling range of 4 degrees, unlike the Sirius, which had no gimbling. So yeah, you'd probably use these to give yourself a little bit extra control. And then the final engine is the... Oh boy, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Well, well, what the heck, let's give it a go. Kedir Hypergolic Engine? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Let's say that that worked. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a fun little monopropellant only engine, which has a maximum thrust of 15 kilonewtons and uses 1.4 monopropellant per second, gimbling range of 0.5 degrees, and is actually meant to be sort of the uh, retrograde stage or descent stage, however you want to put it, for the Vostok uh, overall, so it can actually get back into the atmosphere. Very fun, very nice, very cool little engine. And one problem that I have with this mod at the moment, besides the no internal view, is the monopropellant engine doesn't seem to have any particle effect. I mean, at least give it the RCS effect, that'd be nice, so hopefully that gets fixed. But I'll, I'll show that off in space later, because of course we have one of these up there. But yeah, it has no particle effect whatsoever. Hopefully, again, that does get fixed in the future. Now we've got nothing in command, nothing in structural, but in coupling. Ah, we have two things. The first is the BKED staging system, which is a nice little standard decoupler. Very good, 1.25 in size, of course. And then we have the staging system of the VT61, which is decoupler, but it's meant to go between these. So you'd have this attached to your bottom of your rocket, and then the capsule would fit nice and snugly inside of this uh, slightly elongated decoupler there. So it fits perfectly. Very nice, like an egg in a cup. And yeah, just a, a fun little decoupler for nesting in the capsule. Now we have nothing in payload, nothing in aerodynamic, nothing in ground, nothing in thermal, but we do have electrical, and that is the service module. And that's actually pretty specifically supposed to go, oh boy, yeah, there we go, grab that off. The service module is, of course, basically just a big battery, uh, 200 electric charge, and how the Vostok is designed, it basically goes between the uh, decoupler here and enlarging this whole bit out to the 1.25 meter size variety of parts so you can then build from there. Otherwise, this decoupler is, of course, a little bit smaller than that 1.25 standard size. And uh, then in communication, we have the VT-12 hoops uh, antenna, which we can pop right there and then extend, and it just kind of pops right out for a simple antenna. And then nothing in science. And finally, we have the last bit in utility, the VT-7K return shoot. Because, of course, you're going to want to actually land and land safely with a parachute. So we can pop this just right on top of the capsule, and there you are. You have a Vostok with a complete parachute ready to hopefully return you safely. Now, if you construct everything properly, you should have a craft which, well, oh, what the heck, we'll just load the uh, 
autosave here, you'll have a craft that looks something like this, which is quite cool. Now, I actually was looking at some pictures of the Vostok, and apparently I put the antenna in the wrong place. I guess that's actually supposed to go in... Oh, nope, grab the wrong part. Inside here? The antenna was, like, along here, I guess, from the pictures I looked at? Uh, but yes, basically, how you're going to want to put this together is capsule with parachute, the nesting decoupler, some of these uh, monopropellant tanks, the then service module, the... Uh, Oh my god, the engine I can't pronounce. Then other decoupler, fuel tank, and the remaining two engines. And that's uh, roughly how this thing goes. So let's go and take a look at it in space, of course. Where, um... I believe Jebediah is currently sitting, staring at the unrelenting void, because, of course, this doesn't have an internal view. So all he sees is the dark black of space. And that... Well, <laughs> that looks like this. Oh, it's sad, but oh well. One day, as I said, hopefully it will get an internal view. Until then, we have some cool rocket parts for a historic craft. So to show off the uh, different particle effects on these engines, let's of course throttle up and ignite. And the bezel vernier engine, very nice flame going there, pretty standard particle effect. And the Sirius, also a pretty standard particle effect, but overall, very cool, very nice, and perfect for, of course, getting you into a better orbit, as that's what this upper stage really is meant for. And if we do shut down these engines and stage, bye bye oh, I lost my antenna. Oh, that's probably why the antenna goes onto the engine here. That makes a lot more sense now. Huh. Okay. <laughs> and then you would use this stage of the Vostok to actually decelerate and deorbit yourself to return to terra firma. So let's activate this engine. Which, like I said, even though you can clearly hear an engine sound, though it is low, we have no particle effect and it is rather quite sad. Oop, no, I accidentally shut it off. <laughs> there we go. I meant to hit this button. There we are, so we'd have the UI back. And instead, I pressed a completely different button on the other side of the keyboard. Hmm, well, there's my brain for you. And yeah, so it'll slowly decelerate us and burn off all the monopropellant from these little balls. Until, of course, you're going back into uh, the planet's atmosphere where you to release and then, yes, return to Earth in the lovely Vostok capsule. Uh, but that is really going to be it for today. I mean, we could re-enter, but eh, it'll take a couple of minutes and just... Why? You've all seen capsules re-enter. It's a capsule re-entering. So yes, that is going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out the Vostok Continued Mod, and I would definitely say to give it a try, yeah, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. And uh, of course, I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode today, and that you do come back for the next one, when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, Time. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. No, oh, 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 God! Clipping issue with getting Jebediah out. Oh no, we have a gravity issue here. Oh boy. Well, there goes Jebediah. Later, folks. <laughs>